So the best part about both of these cameras, okay, is they shoot 4K, 30p. Right. No crap. <laughs> what? Welcome back, Deep Review TV viewers. Chris Nichols here, joined by Carrie Rose from DeepReview.com. As you can see, we are in a hotel room, which means we have a brand new camera launch, or in this case, cameras and lenses. Canon actually released a whole ton of stuff. So we've got the Canon EOS 90D to talk about. We've got the EOS M6 Mark II to talk about, as well as a bunch of RF lenses. But let's get right into the SLR first, okay? Now, first off, if you're looking at pure specs, these have very similar internals. We've got the brand new 32.5 megapixel sensor, the highest resolution we've ever seen in any PSC. Right? Ever, 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 right? I know this could be compelling for a lot of people. And it was, it was like, for so long we were waiting for it, who's gonna leapfrog Samsung with the NX1? Right. But finally, yeah, Canon has done it. We have 32.5 right. megapixels, which is just, that's a ton of resolution. Exactly, and I, I know like, you know, a lot of people off the bat would be like, great, higher number, better quality, but that's not always necessarily true. Exactly. At the same time, these cameras still have to be very functional, and I think you'd be forgiven for thinking the 90D is going to be fast focusing. It shoots 10 frames per second, 11 without autofocus. Yep. Um, it is a weather-sealed body. Frankly, some of the buttons, some of the dials, they still feel very 70D, 80D. They're a little mushy, a little, a little light. Yeah, you've got to reach down for that. We're not getting 7D mark three kind of ergonomics, which mm -hmm. is what we'd expect. Right. Okay? However, we do still have a lot of improvements. It is a 45 point autofocusing system. I know that hasn't changed much, but we've got a lot of cross type focusing sensors. But most importantly, you've got the joystick. Check on out the back. that joystick. Yep. And it's like, once you, I'm sorry, once you've used a joystick, once you've used an AF joystick, and yes, it, it, it sounds a little bit more trivial than it is, but once you've used one, it really does change the way you shoot. It's so much easier to, 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 to react to changing situations. Absolutely. But there is a caveat there. Although yes. we have the 45 point system and it does now feature the new face detect tracking in sort of auto area where it should pick up a person's face. We actually had a lot of issues with getting that to pick up the right face. And yeah. this brings me to an interesting point is that mm. why not just kick this camera into live view now we get the new kind of capabilities that the EOS R is gonna incorporate in its new firmware. We get face detect tracking, we get eye detect tracking in servo, and yeah. that actually worked really well. It really did. And then at that point though, so you kick the 90D into live view, and then, but why wouldn't you just start to think about? M6 Mark II, exactly. absolutely, because this is gonna give you the exact same focusing capabilities, but you now have the back screen and you have an EVF. The yes. EVF has nothing to write home about, 2.36 million dots, it's decent. And we should add that, so this particular model, like it's, it's an add-on, it's a, it's right. a, there's an electronic uh, contact here, but it actually is, it's a nice feature to have, actually it's a nice feature to have to, to remove when you don't need it. For sure. When, when I just wanna travel light, but yeah, if I'm shooting, kind of professional stuff or sports action stuff like I would shoot with this, Yeah, you could throw the EVF on here and then you get pretty close to the same experience. I mean, the EOS 90D is like a Jekyll and Hyde kind of camera, right? If you're using is. the optical viewfinder, you're back to an SLR. If you use the live view, not many people want to hold the large SLR here. Like we're shooting sports cars, we're panning, you don't get the stability holding it at arm's length. Right, you it's know, not very the, comfortable holding no. it out like this. The M6 Mark II, we get re regardless through the EVF or the back screen, the same face and eye detect tracking, as Absolutely. well as very good ITTR. But you know, it's not that simple. We still have to consider the EOS 90D, it handles like an SLR. It is gonna have a more stable platform when you are shooting longer lenses. Mm -hmm. It's balancing nicer. It swings better when you're following subjects. And the battery life is gonna be vastly superior. The M6 Mark II, it does have a lot of features on paper, but I think it's still gonna come down to what kind of stuff you like to shoot. And that's the thing, like the biggest differentiator between these cameras is not what's on the inside, it's really what's on the outside. Right. And that's, that's, that's the story that we've been, we've been told and what we've been exploring the entire time is, okay, so do you want this sort of grip? Do you want a camera that looks and feels like this? Yes. And it's a great camera that looks and feels like that. Or do you want a camera that looks and feels like this? Sure. And like for a mirrorless camera, this grip is really, really good. It is. We do have to then address the elephant to the room when you dig even a little bit deeper. 
video capabilities, right, Kerry? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they've, actually, this is one of the things that um, I found pretty strange. So Canon was the pioneer of DSLR video. They were the right. pioneer of saying, we don't really give a crap if there's a mirror in the way, we'll just lock it up and then you can shoot video sure. off the sensor. But the, th the funny thing is, things have changed and now like, actually most of the video centric features are on the DSLR instead of the M6 Mark II, which without a mirror makes much more sense as a video camera. It's a little bit, it's a little bit odd to me. So why would I choose an EOS 90D for video? It has some interesting features that the M6 Mark II does not. And one of the things that's really nice about the 90D is like, okay, so it's a bigger body. We All know right. that. Yes. There's space for stuff. There's space for a headphone port. You can monitor yes. your audio levels <laughs> and you can't do that on, on the M6 Mark, Mark II. II. It's crazy because that's really what set, uh, you know, Levi to decide to shoot on the S90D. Correct. Even though the, the 6 Mark II has the eye detect focus, yeah. he needed the headphone monitoring. Now Canon's mm -hmm. preamps are still not great. However, mm -hmm. you need to be able to hear that our voices are coming through properly. We had lots of traffic noise, lots of race cars. You and have so, to make sure that's not cutting static. through. static. You just want to, you want to hear if there's static from, right. from, from RF interference, all that stuff. Such a basic thing. Stuff. Yeah. Okay, so here's the difficulty I'm having is that the EOS M6 Mark II to, if it had a headphone jack, if it had like the crop factor where you could go even tighter and get better quality most likely on the 4K video, uh, why would we even ever look at the EOS 90D? Is Canon just making it so that this is still a feature we have to look at because it's an SLR? I mean, Nikon's dropping five lines of SLRs, right? Mm -hmm. Is Canon doing this just to kind of keep the SLR float? It's a little strange. It's a little strange because like this is by the feature set, the more video capable camera on right. the two, but there's a mirror in the way. And that's like, that actually doesn't make any sense for right. shooting video. So, thing, and also things like the raw burst, 30 FPS raw burst on the EOS M6 Mark II right. are not on the EOS 90D. So they are pivoting this. This is a video centric stills camera. And this is a still centric camera that's capable of video. Right. We know they're doing that sort of segmentation. Is that doing them any favors? I don't know. It feels like you have to buy both cameras to be happy. I think <laughs> kind of does. You and I being more photographically inclined, we'd probably go M6 Mark II. I think but so. But I know Levi and Jordan, any videographer worth their salt, would be forced, honestly, to go this way because, because of the headphone jack. So we've spent all day shooting the EOS right. 90D and the M6 Mark II. What would you buy if it was your own money? That is a great question. I think as much as I loved the familiarity of using an SLR, I would still have to go with my head and go with the M6 Mark II. Hmm. For me, the big thing is the eye autofocus improvements are fantastic. We're really getting to a level where it detects properly, tracks in continuous servo, and I think I should have that whether I'm using the EVF or the back screen. Plus, I get a smaller camera, the price point's better, and if I want faster glass, I can put the adapter on and I can use EF lenses, which honestly, most Canon photographers are gonna have anyways. Totally. What about you, what do you think? Honestly, I'm leaning the same way. Like, I like traveling with a lighter kit these days. I used to travel with like full frame DSLRs and lenses. These days, and you get the best of both worlds with a mirrorless camera where you can adapt, it doesn't matter what brand it is, you can adapt sure. any, old, uh, any old lens to any old mirrorless camera because of that flange distance. Sure. So I would, for casual shooting, choose a mirrorless camera. Then I can add on some additional lenses that I already have. And then if, yeah, I'm gonna shoot a paid gig, well, I may choose something else, but I think the uh, the M6 Mark II is probably my choice as well. Right. I do also wanna mention, and, and this is gonna be a quick one because frankly, Canon has announced three new RF mount lenses. Yep. This is awesome, you're getting the holy trinity, right? Yes. 15 to 30, 24 to 70, 70 to 200. They are all image stabilized, they're all weather sealed, great optical formulas, yeah. and they do seem to be designed very well. However, we cannot really show or talk about them because Canon has said at this point, we do not have reviewable copies yet. Yeah, so we spent the entire weekend shooting basically these two cameras because we can show you photos and video yes. from them. We would love to show you uh, photos from those new lenses, but unfortunately, we're not, to. we're not allowed to. But again, the promise is great, and it sounds like Canon is really supporting their RF lens line. I just kind of feel like, especially when we have the M6 Mark II, why aren't we getting more M series lenses? Why you're, are we? You're stuck with adapter and EF glass. Really, does, that's how we shot today. Does, do you, I don't know. I, I love I the EFM lineup. Sure. I love how compact it is. It is ultra compact. Yeah, 
you got a slow lens, but like check out, so check out the gallery on DP Review because I shot most of today, most of this entire trip with this combo, this 18, 18 to 150 actually. Yeah. And it did a great job. Same thing with a 90D. I shot actually not this lens, but I shot the kit lens on the 90D. I used a lot of kit lens shooting too. So sure. Yeah. But we're still not getting that sort of perfect package in one. Yeah. Fair enough. I hope you guys enjoyed this anyways. I mean, this is what we've seen with the new Canon launch. I know it's a lot of products. Please don't forget, comment below. Let us know what you think. Check out our Twitter, our Instagram. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, check out deepreview.com. We will have full articles on these products as they come out further. And again, we are eager to get those RF lenses in our hand and do a full review on that. But anyways, thank you so much from Atlanta yeah. uh, for joining us. Thank you, Kerry, for joining us here. Uh, thank you so much. We'll see you very soon. We'll see you soon.